um, we've got a team here. Are you live now? You I, yeah, I believe I'm live as well, yeah. yeah okay. I believe I'm live too, so. Yeah. All right, everybody's live. Um, let's do a little quick introduction, I guess. Um, so to my audience, um, and also this is Daniel McCarthy's audience on Facebook, we have Daniel McCarthy here. We have Steve Daniels here, <laughs> president of the Patriot Party. And yes, if anybody's watching on any of our lives, I'm live on Instagram at MAGA Midge. Uh, Daniel, you're live on... On my uh, Facebook page, which is... I, I don't even know. Daniel, Daniel McCarthy. Daniel I McCarthy. think it says Daniel McCarthy. Somewhere. It says yeah. Daniel McCarthy. Okay. And then... And then um, I'm on li live on my Facebook, which is Stephen Tyler. Uh, no space in between the Stephen and the Tyler, and then last name's Daniels. Stephen Tyler Daniels. All right. Well, uh, very cool. So if mine dies, hopefully you guys can um, hop over there. Um, all right. So let's talk. Let's sort of break this down. I'm going to let you guys fire yeah. it off. So to my audience that's listening and to anyone on other audiences, I would say that what we just witnessed was uh, a war against the unvaccinated. It is very clear that uh, what the what the Biden regime is attempting to do is pin Americans against each other in the most sophisticated way that I've ever seen before. I've never seen uh, the extent of propaganda like we just witnessed. A, uh, due to the math that he said, it, it, the numbers aren't even adding up. He keeps on indicating that there's 80 million people that are unvaccinated. I believe that number is probably far higher than that. Um, and I'm, I'm saying that just based on math that we already have um, and math that he said in the press conference. So regardless if that number is 80 million or 150 million of people that are unvaccinated, that's a personal choice that all of us have. And no one has the right to tell us whether or not we're going to put a needle in our arms or put a needle in our kids' arms. Um, and this is this that's just cut and dry. It's, it's that simple. Uh, so in my estimation, we're actually dealing with a, a scenario where you have the federal government that, frankly, is illegitimate. And that illegitimate federal government is now trying to uh, pin Americans against each other in, a, in the most sophisticated way that I've ever witnessed before. I don't think, I mean, I don't yeah, think there's another way of saying I, it. I personally, I, when I was listening, I said this is a declaration of war. That's how it felt to me. Yeah. War on the unvaccinated. I mean, he basically called them out and vilified people saying, oh, people should be angry. You know, there's so much anger directed at unvaccinated people. They're the ones really making people sick. And they're pushing this narrative that the reason why people are still living under these measures is being blamed entirely on unvaccinated Americans. Yeah, the scare, the alarming part about it is is that if you're vaccinated and if you're someone that made the choice to be vaccinated, uh, you should not care whether or not someone else is vaccinated. That's the whole concept behind a vaccine is, is that you have protections against whatever the virus is. So the idea that the federal government is so adamant about individuals putting a needle in their arm and enforcing their children to put a needle in their arm is a deliberate attempt to undermine American sovereignty. It's a it's it's a war. This is a Chinese weapon. This is a Chinese war. This is a it, Americans just aren't don't understand yet that we're in the midst of a war, and the Biden regime is working hand in glove with other foreign governments to pump a, a poison into American skin. And and frankly, uh, if you're not at a point now where you if you haven't seen the headlines or you, if you don't have personal stories. Of, of what this vaccine is doing to people. Now, listen, I don't know. For all I know, this thing's the, the most uh, medically advanced uh, modern marvel that there is. I mean, maybe this vaccine's the best thing in the world. I don't care. It does. You can't force me or my children or anyone, for that matter, uh, to put a vaccine in their arm. Um, so I believe that we're in the midst of a war. I think that the signs are clear that the, the Biden regime is working hand in glove with foreign entities to uh, poison Americans. It's It's that simple. Yeah, and and for me, I think I think we need to be deliberate with the language because it, technically this is not a vaccine. This is yeah. uh, gene therapy. It's mRNA modification. It's going to modify your DNA effectively. Yeah, it's uh, an experimental, it's, brand it's new medication. Experimental, yeah. So and as much as they want to say it's FDA approved, my understanding is it didn't actually go through the actual not a full trial. Yeah, and actual FDA trials that are normally yeah. required. And I've spoken to, you know, a lot of America's frontline doctors, mm -hmm. the white the white coat doctors. I went to their, uh, I was invited out to their annual summit, their first annual summit out in Texas a few months back. And they effectively said that this jab is, is giving, it's giving people AIDS effectively. It's killing their immune system. Uh, from all that we can tell and a lot, just from what I gather from a lot of the doctors out there right now is that 
this this more aggressive variant, quote unquote, which they cannot test for. There's no way to test for any variant at this point. Mm-hmm. But what's going around right now is pretty aggressive. Yeah, I mean, our, yeah. your family's been dealing with it. Yep. Um, I feel like it's. Um, it's a result of of the jab that people have been taking and their viral load when you've taken the jab they're saying is about 250 times higher uh than that of somebody who just has a virus so yeah. the the shedding quote unquote is is very aggressive and it's making people sick i think that's where we're at and i think we're going to continue to see it get worse and worse as more people get continue to get the jab and then as they start to work towards these these boosters which yeah. they've said yeah. could be a, a perpetual indefinite uh, plan. Well, will you uh, fill people in on what you told me about what the frontline doctors were saying about the reason for the jabs mm-hmm. because people's immune systems? Yeah. Are- so, so as I said, it's effectively giving someone AIDS. It's 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 AIDS in a in a in a syringe effectively because it kills your immune system. The first jab will deplete your immune system by a certain percentage, and then and then the second jab will deplete it even more. And the longer time you have from the last jab moving forward, your immune system gets worse and worse. So. The boosters will effectively artificially keep you sustained or alive. And I've heard in other countries that have already contracted with some of the pharmaceutical companies that are developing these these gene therapies is that it could be up to 10 shots a year. Jeez. So it's almost a monthly – you get a monthly booster. Now they're talking about two pills a day type, med- type medication. I mean – this is completely insane, obviously. Uh, you have to look at it even from a higher level. This really f- goes back to the agenda, what started out as UN Agenda 21, which is now Agenda 2030. So when Daniel talks about this is a, a war on America, a war on society, it is a communist takeover. They're utilizing this this health emergency to do it. But it's been a longer play that they've been working on for the last you know, 20, 30-plus years, yeah. and it falls under a, really a globalist. And what I – what I believe is is a satanic Luciferian plan. Yeah, agreed. I, I think we got some likes over there. Well, I I, uh, I think the next stage is obviously I think most people are asking at least on my end is uh, what do we do yeah. like what what's what are the next steps? So the first thing is is that um, when the mask started in Arizona, we took a very aggressive stance and we pushed back very hard, so hard in fact that I believe our governor right before our eyes even turned uh, into more of a patriot as a result of um, him recognizing that we were not going to tolerate that type of behavior from our government. Uh, So I think it's time from a national level and I think it's time from every state level is that all of us together uh, uniformly uh, declare that uh, this is a war that we're in and as a result of that uh, we will not tolerate any and we will not comply with any a vaccination requirement from anyone in any capacity. Uh, I m- myself, again, this is a, a virus that is definitely very serious. Uh, I've I've seen it uh, uh, personally with with friends and activists that I, I've we've had people die as a result of this. That has no bearing on uh, my uh, freedom and your freedom not to put a needle in our arm uh, for some uh, experimental treatment. So, with that being said. Everyone everywhere has to stop and determine right away that you cannot comply with this. If that means you lose your job, then you lose your job. And that means, and I know that's, I know that's a tough pill to swallow for some. But regardless of what you have to do personally, you have to make sure that you you do not comply with this in any way, shape, or form. But the next step from there is is putting the type of political pressure on our representatives mm-hmm. that makes their lives very uncomfortable moving forward. Um, you need to find where your representatives live. You need to find where your governor is, and you need to go talk to them uh, personally. You need to go make them um, uncomfortable from the standpoint that they're going to hear your voice from now on every single day. I think the reason we had so much success in Arizona was because uh, we had so many activists bombarding our politicians uh, with this just onslaught of, hey, if I see you in a store, um, I'm I'm gonna stop you and I'm gonna make your life uncomfortable. I'm gonna talk to you and then I'm gonna follow I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna find you. I'm gonna talk to you all day long. I'm gonna yeah. Have yeah, your cameras yeah. on and be aggressively asking them questions and demanding answers. Why Why didn't you vote for the vaccine passport ban? What did Correct. you do? Organizing protests outside of their places of business, uh, showing up at their office right when you know they're gonna be in their office, making sure that your voice is heard and that they can't kind of just do what they want without ever having to face the public. I, yeah. No, I agree. Um, it's it's an interesting time that we're in because we've got 
leg- I've, I've had conversations with you know different legislators and uh, the GOP, the Republicans in Arizona and our legislature, they don't f- they, they feel like well if they can't get the votes, they're not going to try. And that's in regards to this in regards to election integrity, whatever it might be. So the massive pressure, the, the massive pressure campaign that we have to put on both, you know, really the governor at this point, Governor Ducey needs to do the right thing and call the legislature back into session so that they can handle this issue. Correct. In addition to obviously election integrity, which plays hand in hand with what we're dealing with. Yeah. We, we're not protected as Arizonans because we don't have legitimate representation. Exactly. Because we do not have secure elections. So these go hand in hand very closely. Uh, I would say non-compliance is is the best way to handle this. Yeah, and the other thing I was going to say is, you know, it's funny because I was speaking on um, on OAN and I was talking about the one day, one vote, on paper, in person, no machines legislation that the Patriot Party of Arizona has proposed and wants to get passed next session. And it's funny because the host, prior to us going live on television, was pushing back against me and saying, well, you know, the reason why they don't want to do anything is they can't get the votes. You know, Jake Hoffman, you know, they're going to maybe try to do something uh, two years from now after the midterms. Uh, but they just don't think that they have the votes. And the reality is, is that you they have to get the votes, right? Like the Democrats never have an excuse. The Democrats never go, oh, we don't have the votes. No, they you go out and you basically if you are in the state body, you go around and you rally enthusiasm for what it is that you're doing. You go out and get the votes. And people like us, we put the public pressure out there and saying this is what we're demanding so that all of a sudden politically they have cover because they know that they're going to be attacked. They know they're going to be attacked by the media for, you know, pushing something. They're going to get labeled as right wingers or whatever. And they're all like weaklings. So the more political cover you can give to these politicians by creating that public momentum, it gives them the cover. It kind of forces them to grow a spine forces and, and then they yeah. then, then they feel like big tough guys right like they feel like the little celebrities like oh yeah we're actually doing what people want and that's what we have to do we, that's what we have to do with Ducey that's what we have to do with the state body mm-hmm. um, and yeah this is how and, and I kind of also wanted you guys to talk about um, was it HR 2770 the mask mm-hmm. that was it right mm-hmm. so tell the audience kind of how you guys got that done and how basically it works when you present some legislation and, and you can get it pushed into into law basically yeah i mean we had state state rep joe chaplick he's been he's been awesome in his first his first uh he's a he's a freshman so freshman step rep. one find a representative find a good representative find a good guy who's on our team who's mm-hmm. like you know represents our values a real conservative yeah somebody who's got a, got a backbone to your yeah. point because it's going to take somebody to be able to stand up against the mob that they're going to face yes uh so we took the language uh within our team presented it to him as far as to not allow the, the government to force businesses to enforce any sort of mask mandate in Arizona. And we, it took a lot of, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on many different candidates or uh, representatives throughout that legislative process to get it across the finish line. But ultimately we did along with many patriots in Arizona. And at that point the governor did sign it. So it, it was a huge win. It was a huge win. It shows what we can do when we put the pressure on. Uh, something that's interesting, I actually just got a message from a representative, uh, an associate of Anthony Sabatini, who's a member of the Florida House of Representatives. Oh, yeah. And he's wanting to work with us to draft the legislation in Florida for the one, for the day, one day, one, one vote. vote. So on see this paper, in person, no machines. Yes. Very glad. And you know, what's funny is because the, the uh, basically the Palm Beach County, Florida GOP reached out to me mm-hmm. and said, I saw you on OAN talking mm-hmm. about that. Uh, how can we get that done? And that's go. what we need yep. people doing all across the country. Mm-hmm. We need you guys out there, wherever you are, putting the pressure on your local elected representatives and, yeah. and saying this is what we want, you know, working with people well, to get it, the legislation You're together. right, and that's why the Patriot Party of Arizona is so important. And I know Daniel will speak on this. He's very passionate about this, as we all are. But it's a very important because Arizona is really the hub of the technocratic deep state. This mm-hmm. is – this is ground zero when it comes to the corruption and everything that we're seeing being rolled out. This is where they've been developing it for many years, as I've spoken on many times in regards to the CIA influences with with uh, Michael Crow at ASU, uh, the mob influences in Arizona. They're doing it all here. Mm-hmm. You know, Bill, Bill Gates is, is, owns a lot of land here. It's no it's no coincidence. So we need a Patriot Party of Arizona to hold our elected uniparty accountable. 
at which point then we can take this, you know, across the United States. If you want to go start a party in your own state to do the same thing, that's that's great. We are we are kind of the test ground for what we're doing. We're going to provide the model. So I'll let Daniel speak on that more. Well, it's quite simple is with with the election integrity being obviously the reason that we're here right because if we can't elect our representatives then we're going to have uh communist regimes running our country mm -hmm. so the concept is is quite simple is is that with a patriot party we can take our volunteers and get inside of the ballot boxes and get inside of the adjudication rooms because the republican and democrat party are the ones that actually count the votes so we need to make sure that we have our independent uh, actual patriots capable in 2022 to count the votes here in Arizona and to get involved that way. Wait, um, so slow down. So just so people can sort of like, because you talk really fast, yep. I want everybody to sort of understand this. I get attacked every single day because people go, oh, you know, so basically currently we're a PAC. The Patriot Party of Arizona is a PAC. But Polit we're political a, a action committee. Political action yeah. committee. And we are working on becoming an actual recognized party. And so many people attack me every day with the, the constant, like, I, I get it, it's been hammered into us since we were kids, that you're gonna split the vote. And they have this idea that by creating a new party, it's literally trying to split the vote. And that's the complete opposite of what we're trying to do. What we're trying to do is actually to gain access to these adjudication rooms so that we can watch when they're actually committing the fraud and we have an actual legitimate party to do so. Because currently, random observers aren't allowed in. Yeah. Um, you can't have yeah. outside groups becoming a bipartisan you know, observer group. They literally cherry pick people from the Republican Party and from the Democrat Party, and they put them in these rooms, and that's how they're rigging the vote. And this is how we know that they basically, the Republicans are in on it because they help. They're the ones that pick. Yes. It's the yeah. parties that yeah. determine who's going to be in who's those rooms. Be the winners and, and who's going to be in those rooms mm -hmm. and who's going to be the winners and losers Correct. because we saw them rig primaries. Well, yes. The Republican Party rigged primaries here in Arizona. They rigged primaries primaries in many states across this country where we saw the same kind of fraud that they used in November. So that's not Democrats doing that. That's the Republican Party. Mm -hmm. And so if we can hold these people accountable and we can watch what they're doing at a very, you know, close well, yeah. level. Yeah, look, if for those that are not familiar with exactly what's going on, the Democrats and Republicans are the same party. It's it's one party. They work together. They play good cop, bad cop. It's one coin, two different sides or two wings of the same bird, whatever you want to call it. You have a situation in this country where they've been systematically corrupting the party system. The party system works, but if both of your parties are actually working together, you don't have a party system. So we don't have a party system any longer in this country. You have fake Republicans and communists working together to to usher in a communist agenda. Well, how would you address though? Because a lot of people have they they see like well they vote most of the time with us, but on what I've always. What I've noticed, I guess, as I've really been studying what these people are doing, it seems like on the big things yeah. where they're really undermining American sovereignty or they're helping to usher in communism, they're working together. Like how we've got, you know, um, Christy Noem and Trump and DeSantis, you know, inadvertently, like, mm -hmm. advocating for vaccines. Yeah. And then you've got the Republicans who are taking all this money from Big Pharma, and so are the Democrats. And then, sure. and then the Democrats are the fall guy. They are the bad guys. But the Republicans just pretend like they can't do anything and they sort of allow it in. So they're inadvertently helping to move things in the same direction. Well, yeah, it's hard, right? Because most of us don't want to pay attention to politics all day, every day. For those that, that do, we've been observing for many years now this uh, merge of the two parties. It used to be that their differences were much more um, noticeable. But as of the last, uh, I'd say, you know, 20 years specifically, there's been a natural progression of these two parties and the power, the elites really working together, regardless of parties, to get their agenda done. So to answer the question, um, it's theater. It's all it's all theater. Like a lot of the stuff that you witness as a normal civilian paying attention to politics, you're witnessing actual pawns doing what they're supposed to do in, to ensure that the sheep, i.e. us, all the people go along with this new uh, this new jolting towards communism. You can't take Americans that are familiar with a Fourth of July and and freedom and, and Second Amendment. You can't just take us and push us into communism. We're not Australia, right? So they have to systematically of basically uh, evolve us into that into that world. So what you're living through is a time where all your political, especially at the at the federal level, is all theater. It's all fake. It's all controlled. 
it's big pharma it's it's these global uh, corporate entities which are controlled by the same people no one wants to say who these people are because if you say who these people are you're called whatever but let's just face it it's a small group of people that really this cabal whatever you want to call it that control the world and we're all just little little sheep in this whole mix so that's why i want to i don't want to forget this this is so important too it's not just about putting political pressure on your politicians in addition to that simultaneously you have to make it uncomfortable for any business any business or any any service that tries to require a vaccine on you or your family you need to confront them you need to you need to make it very uncomfortable and the reason why i say this especially for you men out there that are watching this you need to step up and be a man because god forbid a, a woman has to go into a grocery store or go into somewhere and she's being told to put a mask on or you have someone that's being told, oh yeah, you have to put a vaccine, you have to put a needle in your arm. No, if someone says that to me, then I'm gonna make it very uncomfortable as soon as they say that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna confront them, I'm gonna belittle them, I'm gonna berate them, the same way that the president just berated us. You, so you see, when you are just berated by the president of the United States, what he's basically telling you is, is this is the new culture of America. So he's gonna call us, he's gonna call us basically convicts because we don't wanna put a vaccine in our arm so what we're going to do in return to that is we're going to respond when someone tells me to put a vaccine in my arm. I'm going to I'm going to tell them how, uh, how much of a convict they are for trying to tell me to put a, a experimental drug in my arm. I'm going to make it very uncomfortable for those people. So if you don't like confrontation like that, unfortunately, that's the world we live in now. So you I would become I would become uh, comfortable being uncomfortable now and pushing back against this tyranny as quickly as possible, because if you don't. The next round from here is just going to get worse and worse and worse. These people, these communists will not give yep. you an inch. They will take it all. No, I agree. I agree. And you've never worn a mask. No. Same here. No. Wow, I mean, just neither of you. Nope, just won't do it. I, I was in jail. I was in jail. They tried to put a mask on me. I wasn't going to do it. No. You know, yeah. that's just one of those things. Yeah, guys, this guy got arrested um, speaking in front of a school board meeting. So, Steve, you're the man. Well, uh, outside. Yeah, outside I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Uh, First Amendment right, not allowed yeah, can't, anymore. Can't speak too much on the details because it's still an active case. They yes. are they well, are we'll actually pushing it, the issue. This guy's a real They are great, actually going to probably patron. go to trial. I appreciate that. I, I think it's going to go to trial. I'll take it to the end. I want it to be some sort of precedent-setting case. Judicial Watch is actually helping out on the civil side. Great. But, yeah, it's very interesting. You, you can't cannot comply. No. You cannot comply. Chris Ann Hall, who's a constitutional attorney down in Florida, she's made a little documentary movie called Non-Compliant. Mm -hmm. I, I challenge everyone to watch that. It's non it's called Non-Compliant, the movie. How do you watch it? Uh, I believe it's, you just, just go to DuckDuckGo or whatever your search engine is and, and just put in Non-Compliant, the movie. The movie. I challenge everyone to watch it. We're going to actually show a, show a viewing of it at our next uh, monthly meeting here in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, which, can we tell people a little bit about the Patriot Party and what it is, that what our mission statement is and kind of what our goals are and how people can get involved, or even if they're not in Arizona, how they can support this movement or, or try to do Definitely. something similar? Yeah, yeah, so the mission statement's very simple. It's restore and maintain constitutional conservative leadership in Arizona. It's that simple. And there's different ways we're going to do that, and that's what we're talking about right now is holding our elected accountable restoring integrity to the election process. Uh, you can go to stoptherhinos.com. So it's www.stoptherhinos, R-I-N-O-S.com. Please contribute whatever you can. If you're not in Arizona, like I said, we're the, we're the battleground. This is where the war is at. So you need to send us support, and you can do that through your, through your checkbook if you're able to, and we would definitely appreciate it. And we will put it to good use. That's the thing. We are... In my estimation, I know Daniel probably agrees with this, and so does Maggie, is that if, if not for us and what we're doing, there's no hope for Arizona. There are no other groups in Arizona yeah. that are doing what we're doing. The yeah. rest of these groups that pop up are a bunch of grifters. It's a bunch of controlled opposition groups who are running cover for the GOP. I mean, we could talk for hours on just how corrupt yeah. the GOP is. Yeah, they've got – I mean, the GOP – the Arizona GOP has raised millions of dollars off of this audit, pretending like they're the ones that are doing yeah, it. Yeah. They haven't donated a single dollar. It's That's literally right. a grift. They're just they're just fundraising for themselves. Meanwhile, we're out here. I, I volunteer my time. I work for free here at the Patriot Party. Um, you know, most people here are not getting paid much. We're in a back closet right now <laughs> in a makeshift studio. 
because we care about this country and it really takes grassroots efforts. I mean, this is a true grassroots yeah. effort to get the ball rolling for actual change in this country because you're not going to expect it to come from the heritage group. You're not going to expect no. it to no. come from these massive grifter groups that are just fundraising millions of dollars. Talking points USA. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and just funneling it into uh, projects that don't go anywhere or don't have any actual change here on the ground. And I think when people look into what you guys have done, like some of the, the uh, bills that you've had passed into law, um, you know, the rallies, the kind of pressure that you've been able to put on, mm -hmm. on politicians here to do the right thing, I think when people actually look into that and see it for themselves, like they have to realize that this is actually how you can be effective. Mm -hmm. It's not just um, going to a conference in Florida and watching a bunch of Fox News people get up there and say the same old shtick over and over and over. I did that. I went to all those conferences yeah. for years. And guess what? I left every time being like, well, what am I supposed to do? It was great to listen to Tucker Carlson and Hannity and Kaylee McEnany and mm -hmm. Donald Trump Jr. But nobody, you know, they pump you up, but they don't actually give you solutions for what you can do to make a difference. Um, it's where not you live. Yeah, it's not action based. No, and that's what I always ask the, everybody, you know, when they're out there campaigning, whether it's a candidate for governor, whoever it is in, in the state. They're out there campaigning, saying, we need election integrity. I say, great, how are you going to do that? And it's radio silence at that point. So as we've said, you know, one day, one vote, paper ballots, no machines, voter ID, precinct level voting, mm -hmm. precinct level tabulation, et No mail-in ballots. No mail-in, bottom line. And speaking on grassroots, great grassroots efforts, uh, I want to give a shout-out to Liz Harris. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Liz Harris and her group have been running this canvas operation here in Maricopa County, and they've exposed some massive fraud. They, we knew the fraud was there. We knew it was very high level and massive, but they've actually given us the the mechanism and it unveiled kind of the mechanism that they've used to cheat. So isn't, we do know how they're doing it at this point. And isn't it funny, too, that Liz Harris was able to do this completely on her own mm -hmm. without a, a ton of support. I mean, she got some support, but not, not tremendous support. No, she's it's really been a, a, a mainly volunteer grassroots effort. Yeah, I mean, she's she done an amazing job. Faster than what the, they, her what results the are out is. before the audits yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. And without millions of dollars. Yeah. And I mean, the point is, I don't know. I'm just going to say this because I talk to a lot of people in the media, many of them, my my former friends who say that they're really only concerned with figuring out what happened November 3rd and they're not really yeah. interested in making changes. We all know that fraud occurred. We yeah. all know. Like, we can see it also with this canvas. We don't even need the results of the audit. I don't need to see yeah. it, to be honest. I actually don't care. What I care about is ensuring election integrity by the midterm so that we can yes. actually have fair elections moving forward. Well, you got, you got to walk and chew gum at the same time. I'm not saying people shouldn't be prosecuted. I want I, I want more than anyone for these people to be held accountable, these criminals. I well, mean, I they should wanted, be in prison. I, I wanted Hillary Clinton to be held accountable. Right? I wanted a lot of people to be it's held accountable. It's a lot of theater. Right? They, yes. don't, they don't. We, They're we've not going to be. No one's going to be held we've accountable. We've been specifically told that the, the elected will not put their own people in jail. It's just not how it works. Yeah. Now. If we had re legit elections, then we would have that ability. We could get, you know, constitutional sheriffs elected that would hold them accountable. So bottom line is, is I'm not saying ignore what happened November 3rd and, and don't go back and, and kind of undo what they did if possible. But I just don't see that happening in a timely manner. We've got to we've got a very short window. We've got probably 60 days mm -hmm. to get the governor to call a special session to get the legislature back in there. We've got the framework for the bill. We've got the framework that they need to, to, to write the law. And then at that point, they pass it, and then they make the county recorders implement that along with the Secretary of State, and it secures our primary for next year. Because that's the key is the primary is where they do a lot of the, the cheating to keep the good constitutional conservatives out. So when they, you know, when everybody says, well, we're going to split the vote, you can't split the vote in a primary. Our goal is to get the good candidates through the primary to the general. Right. And at that point, with secure elections, we're we're a conservative state. I don't care what anyone says. You know, everybody wants this to say that we've turned state. purple no. or we're trending no. towards blue. Not happening. No, we're very conservative. A very conservative state, and if we have secure elections, the conservatives will win. The constitutional conservatives will win. Uh, they've got the rigging down to the precinct level. So Bobby Python, uh, who's actually running for Senate in his state. He's worked hand in hand with Liz Harris on this canvas, and he was on the Stu Peters show the other day, and I listened to what he said, and he said they've been doing this for so long that they go and backdate the data, the voter rolls, to create phantom or ghost voters so that they can essentially plug in votes where they need them 
across every precinct. Wow. So the the top, you know, this is the, the audit's only addressing the the president and the Senate race, but this is really a down ballot issue. I I think they've been rigging even down to the municipal levels for a long time. Now, do they rig every race every time? I don't think they do, and I don't think they, they know they don't need to. But the ones that they need to target, they do, and they have the ability to press a button. Well, and I think what it is is that they can't just do everything at once. I think what no. they're trying to do is to systematically give the appearance that yeah. that the country's turning more blue when it's not. And that this this state is turning more blue when it's not. Correct. So I think that's sort of what they did. We saw that happen across the country in November. Mm -hmm. But people don't realize that it's actually been going on a long time, probably in states like Colorado. It's been oh, going yeah. on. I mean, in California, we used to be much more red than we are. And then they started the cheating, right? They got mm -hmm. a super majority. And the, they condition the people, right? And they condition they people condition to them. make you believe that that entire state is communist. And don't get me wrong. There's a lot of terrible commies out in California. But there are so many seats that should be red. There are so many congressional seats that were stolen in the midterms, mm -hmm. five specifically in Orange County that flipped from red to blue literally at midnight when they dumped a bunch of these mail-in ballots. Um, and that's, that's well, yeah. Why do so many doing. people? Why do so many people exit these states? Right. It's yeah. because they're not being represented the way that they want. Yeah. So clearly, if they've stolen these these seats, uh, the people aren't going to go along with it. They're going to leave. So that's why you do see a lot of the quote unquote communism, and it is commu a communist state at this point. The people in power are communists. They've cheated their way into those positions of power, and the people are no longer going along with it. They just they just exit. Yeah. So we've people, got a lot of good conservatives that move all, here. All these Californians are moving here. A lot of them are great people. A lot of them I just are. Yeah. Saw two of my friends today. Yeah. They're moving here. I moved here. Yeah. Yeah, and a lot of people are in the fight now too because they don't want to see uh, what happened to California happen in exactly. Arizona. Exactly. Yeah, we were. I mean, I appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone. And I, I'll say, though, uh, just to regurgitate and reiterate something um, uh, we are in a war as a country. Um, and if you can, if you continue to bury your head in the sand and uh, ignore that, you're not doing anyone a service. Uh, this war right now is a cold war. And right now, this war can be fought peaceably and politically. And that's the goal is to maintain a, uh, an opportunity to do that. So everyone as Americans have an obligation. We have a unique obligation as Americans, uh, according to our covenant with God and according to our, our, our constitutional rights. We have an obligation to stand up very firm now against this type of tyranny because make no mistake about it. That's exactly what this is. So uh, I would suggest strongly that everyone uh, recognizes the Patriot Party in Arizona as much as you can by way of your time, talent and treasure. We'll take whatever you can give. Uh, because we need it. We need this party established for us to be able to uh, do what we do on the ground. We've done everything we possibly can now without a party. So and we, we can only go so far as uh, as a group and as activists. So I, I, uh, um, I beg everyone, please, to help with the Patriot Party. It is the only solution in terms of political solutions uh, that can start to maneuver some of these things. But it also demonstrates in a larger way uh, what needs to be done in terms of a parallel system. It's imperative that you also support businesses that are not complying. We have to work together and make sure that we are uh, in, in spend your dollars wisely. It's not the same world anymore. You have to make sure that you support these individuals that are out there and uh, are running their businesses that are not forcing mask mandates and, and, and vaccine ma and mandates, et cetera. Um, so I think there's a good opportunity as well right now for like, you know, our Dr. Bishop that we know and, and many of the doctors that we're working with that are going to be having practice opportunities uh, for individuals to um, get service uh, without being forced to have a needle in their arm. So yeah. I just I, I encourage everyone to um, engage now uh, while you can. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Stand up before it's too late. That's the bottom line. Yeah. We, we've been telling people for over a year, almost a year and a half now, and we said it's coming. It's yeah. coming. We've been warning people, and it's 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 here. It's here. They just, you know, the Biden administration just said any company th that has over 100 employees. I mean, think about how many companies that are. They said it's going to touch over 80 million Americans. If it's over 100 employees, that company has to require a vaccination or weekly test. It's unrealistic on, on in both regards. But don't quit. Number one thing is don't quit your job. Uh, if they're going to try to force something on you, then you make them fire you. That way there's going to be some legal recourse Good on the point. back end. Yep. Uh, we don't want people just to quit. Don't give up. Make them fire you. Make them make make them make that choice. Yep. Make the business make that choice. Uh, don't make it easy on them. If you quit, you you absolve them of, of liability and of 
of having to make that hard decision. So yeah, make them fire you is what I would say. Yeah, that's great. And document advice. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you guys have anything else, or should we kind of wrap this up? I don't want to go too long because we yeah. want to post the video on Instagram. I don't want my phone to die. No. Nope. Yeah. Sad no, day in America. Yeah. Yeah. Got to keep fighting, people. Don't quit. Yeah. Bottom line, do not quit. And please support the Patriot Party of Arizona at StopTheRhinos.com. Um, you can learn more about our platform, what we stand for, and make a donation or just uh, sign up for our email list and follow along with what we're doing and uh, follow our activism. Yeah. And hopefully it'll inspire you to kind of get involved or take action in a similar way in your state as yeah. well. One, one closing note. So someone I saw ask a question said, how do we become a formal party? We've got to get about 35,000 total signatures. We're about halfway there. Yep. Uh, if, there if there's any patriots out there, patriot uh, – wealthy patriots out across this country and they want to sponsor what we're doing please contact us through the website yeah because then we or can just, hire more people yes to help email us. me email me at steve at azpatriotparty.com so just email me at steve at azpatriotparty.com if you want to stroke a check and make this happen in the next 30 days let's get it done i know there's plenty of them out there so put your money to good use if you want to stop this tyranny on a national level fight it here in arizona and let us do it yeah and then hopefully people can emulate this model in their own state. Exactly. So um, just to reiterate and remind everyone one more time who everyone is, um, I'm Fog City Midge, also MAGA Midge. I'm on my uh, Instagram account, at MAGA Midge. Uh, my name is Maggie Vandenberg. I'm a filmmaker, um, activist, now involved with the Patriot Party. And, um, and people can find me at Fog City Midge on all my social media. And I also want to introduce both of you guys, but I'll let you introduce yourself. Go ahead. My name is Daniel McCarthy. I was a, a candidate candidate for United States Senate here in the Republican primary last election cycle. And uh, previous to that, I was a very successful businessman in terms of um, running multiple companies. Um, this was uh, last resort for me. And obviously, um, Maggie and I also, just to clarify some things, uh, Maggie and I will uh, also be doing this together uh, again, actually, um, right. with um, with Chink. On the oh. Young Turks, oh, yeah. so you should. We're, we're going on the Young Turks, so, you yeah, guys. Yeah. So please. So, so if you're a hater, up. if you're a hater out there, listen. Don't be, don't be like that. I know there's, I know Maggie's got a lot of haters. Don't be like that. There's no reason for it. It's. Uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be on yeah. with Chank Unger on the Young Turks talking about this stuff. I guarantee it's probably That's gonna, gonna be fun. It's gonna yeah. be a hit job, I'm sure. Yeah. But it should be fun. The the honest to God's truth is, I will speak to anyone, yep. left, right, communist, whatever. I will tell anyone uh, what I believe in and what I know to be true because it's the truth, so it's yeah. pretty easy to defend. Yeah, and then Steve Daniels, uh, the chairman pro tem of the Patriot Party of Arizona. I had met Daniel through his Senate campaign and worked very closely with him on that. And we just saw that very quickly after the primary where he was cheated, and we do have confirmation of that uh, through the Giuliani team. Right after that, we, we knew we had to – we knew that what was going to happen to Daniel would happen to President Trump in the in the general, and we came up with the solution almost immediately after that we had to start a party uh, in order to hold everyone accountable. Yeah, and um, you've also been an activist here in Arizona for a long time, fighting with the school boards. Not, yeah. Not just in the past couple yeah. months, but literally for years. Been doing so. this for a while. Yeah. Doing yeah. it for a while. So yeah, we, it's full time now, though. It's it, you have to give up. You have to be uncomfortable. You have to give some things up. You you know I've give left till it hurts. Yeah, you do. You know. You, you do at this point we have to fight bottom line yeah and um how can people follow you uh so steven tyler daniels on both instagram and facebook and then patriot party dot az on instagram and we're on twitter as well and you too oh yeah twitter is a uh, demand daniel az so you can find me on twitter i'm now i'm now active on twitter yeah there we're getting is. we're getting you out there <laughs> yeah, we're gonna yeah. get you on we twitter. gotta build yeah. our build our presence yeah. yes all right well i'm gonna shut this down thank you guys thanks everyone, everyone. for checking it out i'm sure there were some great comments i'm really sorry i couldn't read them from this far I'm quite i'm quite far from there Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, I'm really glad that we had a, an audience on here and that people were listening and interested in what we had to say. Um, we're going to be posting a lot more about what it is we're doing to, you know, basically help get our elections under control. So thank you so much for tuning in. And please uh, share this content and this message with other Americans. God bless you. Hey, do you have access to my the U.S. Senate Facebook page? No, I've got access to nothing on Facebook. I think...
because once I got to, I, you know, I'm on my sixth count, so everything's just 